And I realized how much, like, you know, the selfishness that I had run from, that title that I had run from my entire life was actually something that was going to save me, you know? You told me I could charge you with pain. to another episode of makeup diaries with mariah i'm mariah if you're new here please don't forget to like this video to leave me a comment to subscribe all that good stuff if you are not new hey girl hey welcome back to another video please ignore my hair it does look a little bit messy i realize i tried to do heatless curls but i haven't worn this wig honestly i have not worn wigs in in like since june really i have not worn a wig since june and so it's been like two months so i'm kind of like readjusting to wearing wigs um because i'm about to go out of, out of town soon so i and i'm wearing a wig but i'm just like i'm readjusting because i've had braids like the whole summer but yeah so we're back to wearing wigs um and today's video is very special it's very important to me especially going into fall when i feel like this is the time when we start like renewing like i feel like most people see summer as a time to just like relax and all of that but when we go into fall it's like oh business it's time for business so um today i want to talk about you know the act of being selfish and how important that is to me in my life so if you're interested in that and hearing about how you can be more selfish and why you should be more selfish and my thoughts on that go ahead and keep watching um so let's get into it okay i'm just gonna go ahead and start again super light beat today not even gonna put on any lashes super not interested but i want to talk about being selfish because that is a word in my life that has always carried a lot of weight and i mean that in a negative way like it's always been something that was weaponized against me um, and I mean by that, and by that I mean I was always called selfish, you know? Like, I was called selfish by my mom, mostly. Um, you know, and she kind of really weaponized selfishness against me, um, because of the ways in which I had to kind of be selfish when I was growing up. Um, if you don't know this about me, I'm an oldest child. I'm an oldest child. I'm the girl. Actually, I'm the only girl. Like, most of my cousins are boys. You know, I have a couple girl cousins, but I'm like, really, I'm the only girl. And in my house, I was always the only girl and I was the oldest. And so that kind of really like, I'm not going to say like it really, it was hard. It was hard growing up, especially when I was 16 and, um, you know, I lost my father and I've talked about that maybe not to a major extent, but I've talked about like, you know, losing my father at such a young age and how that really, really affected me. Um, and losing my dad was really hard, but it also then made me as a teenager even more like parentified. And I feel like I've always been parentified. Um, and that's a whole, like I could talk about that for days, but that's not what we're here to talk about is me being parentified. I'm just talking about the act of being selfish. But, you know, growing up in a house where we were, you know, poor and also I was the oldest, I had a lot of responsibilities but not a lot of freedom you know what i mean like i'm not saying i was trapped in the house in any way shape or form like i was you know able to go outside but the expectations for me were always different and so i always felt very crowded you know i was always made to feel like if i closed my door or if i needed time alone there was something wrong with me like i was depressed or i was or i wasn't like being family oriented or i just like really you know, or something like there was always something like it was me needing to be alone was selfish, you know, me wanting to just cook a meal for myself at one time in my life, like during the week is selfish. Me wanting to like go out and spend like what little money I had as a kid on myself and just like buy something like to eat and maybe not like buy food for the rest of my, my siblings or my brothers or if I wanted like snacks or something. And I didn't have money to like buy stuff for them. And don't get me wrong, like I would give my brothers my last dime if they needed it and I had it. Um, but it was selfish. You know, my mom would always tell me like, you're so selfish that you would do that. I can't believe you would do that. I didn't raise you to be that way. And the crazy thing is, is like, I used to believe her. And so for a long time, I was like, damn, maybe I'm just a bad person. 
you know, maybe I'm just a selfish bitch and I'm a bad person because I don't have a lot that is my own. I don't have a lot, like, I did, growing up, I just didn't have a lot, but I definitely didn't have a lot that was just for Mariah. And so carving out these little moments and carving out things that were just for me were so, so, so important to me. But every time I did that, there was this guilt that I felt. And sometimes the guilt was like placed on me. Like you should feel, I was made to feel guilty about being selfish, you know? And it kind of made me, it, it really isolated me from the rest of my family, you know, in a way that I, I, I didn't exactly want to be isolated, but I also, I kind of liked that I was isolated because they expected less from me. That, not that they didn't expect any, thing for me because they still expected way too much for me um especially as a kid who was you know making mistakes but really I wasn't allowed to just fuck up and make mistakes without like being like harshly reprimanded and so that obviously put a strain on the relationship between me and my mom um because she was at that point really the only I mean yeah the only parent that I had left after my dad had died um, but it was just like super, it was like, it was tense. The situation was always tense. And so for a long time, I just like really felt bad about being selfish. And I, I felt like I had to be this people pleasing person. I had to take care of people. I had to always be there when people needed me. Otherwise there was something wrong with me if I didn't, if I didn't give everything that I had to other people, you know, and I, and I kind of was raised, you know, to do that. And, and it's, I don't have any kids. I shouldn't have to give that much, but I did always have to give that much when I was younger. And I think that's a huge problem, especially with black parents, but honestly, just with oldest daughters, like I think we should be able to collect child support. Oldest daughters should be able to collect child support because those are my kids too. And I raised them too, you know? And it's like, well, who raised me? I mean, me really but we're not gonna go there um but yeah like i i feel like i really deserve something but it's really hard it's really hard when you're raised to feel like anytime you want anything to yourself or something that's just yours that that's bad and that you are a bad person to find a way out of that so i felt like anytime i wanted something that was my own i I really struggled with that. And so then, oops. So then I went to college and I felt like going to college is kind of what started the process of freeing me because I had all this freedom and I wasn't, you know, I was there, I was by myself. Um, I didn't really have anybody that I was responsible for except me, even though it kind of, you know, I kind of, I struggled with that at first of feeling like, damn, those people at home you know, my family, they still need me. I still have to be there for them. I still have to show up for them. I still have to make sure my brothers are doing their homework. I still have to make sure. And I was running myself ragged, trying to help run home from like 6,000, not 6,000, 3,000 miles away. Like that's, that's, that's an absolute crazy thing to think that you can do. And it's not the responsibility of an 18 year old. So it kind of, and like I said, like me being parentified and me being called out for being selfish when I was younger, it really strained the relationship between me and my mom. So when there was all this distance between us and she couldn't just burst into my room and like call me out, like, why do you need all this time alone? I did stop calling her a lot because I didn't feel the need to talk to her. I didn't want to talk to her. I loved the freedom that I felt, but I feel like it, 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 it was hard because I'm such an independent person and I've always taken care of people. So I get to college and I have all this freedom and now it's like, damn, I finally have to take care of Mariah. And so I did start taking care of Mariah. I started finding ways to do things that I like. I started shopping more. I started eating out more. I started, I went through all these phases and I've been a person my entire life who has struggled with like excess and dealing with excess and like dealing and, and, and operating in extremes. And that's one of my, one of the things that I've always worked on. So it was really, really hard for me to find balance because then I would just isolate myself and say, no, I don't want to go out this weekend. Um, I don't want to hang out. I just want to stay in my room, watch movies and eat dominoes. And that's how I gained 60 pounds freshman year. 
that's not here nor there. The point is, is I started being selfish to the point where I was isolating myself because I had never experienced a healthy level of being selfish, a healthy level of self-preserving, you know? So I was overextending myself, you know, isolating. And then I was like, I, once I realized that I was doing that, I went the opposite direction. I started signing up for everything, getting two jobs, three jobs, signing up for every show, auditioning for whatever I could, going out with my friends every three and I And I felt ragged. I was run ragged. I had no time for myself. And that was hard too. It was really, really, really difficult to do that. And I really, I, I, I mean, it was, I just, I, I was like, I don't know what to do now. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know which way to go, which, what is, what is up? What's right? What's down? You know, how do I protect and preserve myself and my well being while at the same time, you know, putting, putting myself out there and being a good friend and being a good member of this community that I was a part of. Well, that's hard. Okay. And it's hard for anybody. Let me be clear. But it was hard for a person who grew up fiercely independent, but also made to feel guilty about, you know, not contributing when I needed to preserve myself. So I really struggled on like, when do I give and when do I withhold? You know, like I, I, I really didn't know how to find balance in that and when to give and when to withhold. And it really wasn't until, you know, um, I kind of had a breaking point and I, I had like a real, like a major breakdown <laughs> my senior year of college. I don't want to go too much into it, but I did. I had a major breakdown my senior year of college and um, it, it kind of forced me to really reevaluate my priorities and it forced me to put myself at the center of everything before anybody else, you know, before anything else, I had to put myself at the center of like what was going on in my life. I had to put myself at the center of like what made me happy. And it started to make me realize like there is that I didn't have any balance in my life and that I really had never experienced balance in my life when it came to preserving myself. And that's when I started, that's when I started to, you know, once I started being self-centered and centering myself in my life and in all my decisions, I started to feel this sense of calm, this sense of confidence, this sense of like self-love that I've never, ever, ever experienced in my life. And I really thought was like never going to happen to me or for me. And I realized how much like, you know, the selfishness that I had run from, that title that I had run from my entire life was actually something that was going to save me, you know? And it, and it started to be, you know, what, what's that one Audre Lorde quote? Um, selfishness or something is an act of self-preservation. Um, I really started to internalize that in that, you know, I had to be selfish in order to like preserve myself, in order to survive. I had to be selfish in order to, you know, continue to function as a human being. And so selfishness, started to become a title that I wore proudly. And I find that a lot of women, especially a lot of my friends, you know, that I know are women that I've en encountered and especially working with like young people. I find that when it comes to girls, we are often over, we are often expected to overextend ourselves and people will find ways to make us feel bad about what brings us joy and happiness and choosing ourselves you know, and that choosing ourselves is what's going to lead us to a life of being alone and being unhappy. But I will tell you, that's not the truth for me. Like truly never been the truth. You know what I mean? Like I actually am never happier than in the times that I am being selfish and choosing myself or in the times that I'm being selfish and I'm choosing one activity or another or one friend group over another like i i have to sometimes be selfish and like choose what what's right for mariah you know i used to be the kind of person and this is something that i can relate to and i talk about this all the time when it comes to my birthday like i'm a sagittarius that's what the necklace says i'm a sagittarius and you know that's like i i, I just am like a person who's big on like joy and happiness and love and like light and like experiencing things but i'm also a person who's big on me i'm big on mariah i'm big on what makes mariah happy 
And on my birthday, I found that I would always find myself overextending myself and then being disappointed. Like I would find that I wanted everybody to be having a good time on my birthday and so much so that I wasn't having a good time on my birthday. And I found in the times when, on my birthday when I don't center myself and I find myself trying to center other people, trying to make other people happy, is when I have the worst time. So I started at one year just having, having to say, fuck it. You know, my therapist, when I was in, no, when I just graduated college, she always used to say to me, and I don't see her anymore, but I really do carry her words with me. Like in her culture, your happy birthday, the way they say it to each other translates to, I'm happy you were born today. And every single year I say that to myself because I am happy I was born that day. And so my birthday has to be about me. What makes me happy so you can't come to the birthday dinner it's no hard feeling but i'm not about to bend over backwards to make your day because it's my day you know what i mean and so that selfishness allowed me the freedom to enjoy myself on a day that used to bring me so much anxiety and stress and it shouldn't because it's my birthday it's supposed to make me happy that's what should be more important than anything is me being happy me having fun on my birthday and and, and I use that as an example, but I can, I mean, I can apply that to so many different situations in my life where I've just decided I'm choosing myself. You can come along for the ride and I'll be happy you're there and no hard feelings if you can't, but I'm choosing me, you know? And I think that has really helped me in my friendships, in my relationship with my family, in, in my dating relationships. Like, that in like setting boundaries but i also think being selfish is setting boundaries i think being selfish is like choosing yourself and that's like i feel like that's just so important for women we don't choose ourselves enough and then we bend over backwards and overextend ourselves and wonder why we're burnt out and it's because you're not doing what is good for you you are not being selfish enough and i think that this fall we gotta be more selfish, ladies. We have to be more selfish. Cause not only do you deserve it because you're that girl, but you deserve it because if you don't, you're gonna crash and burn. And then everybody's, nobody's gonna be pleased. So we just have to find ways as women to be more selfish. So if you made it all the way to end this video, Thank you so much for watching don't forget to like this video to follow me on social media to make sure you're subscribed to leave me a comment and girl be selfish that's really the gist of what i'm trying to get at be more selfish because we all deserve it thanks see you guys in the next video bye